Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new here, I'm Mary and I love to share the many projects I have going on around here with you all. extreme case of spring fever. We live here in northeastern Ohio where our winter days are just really gray and drab and dreary and spring is always such a welcome sight. So I'm really starting to feel it. Um, I notice that the birds are singing differently. Uh, we have some bulbs, the early flower bulbs are starting to peek through and there's just definitely some spring signs going on out there and I'll share them with you guys because I know a lot of you are nature lovers too. I just came back from spending about five days in Florida with my parents. My sister and I flew down and surprised my mom. She had no idea we were coming. It was so much fun, but it was so nice and sunny down there. And sometimes we take walks, you know, through parks and we saw all this nice greenery and maybe pots fixed up. And I just had such mood when I came back to do something like this. So that's what I'll be doing in this video. I will be trying to turn these terracotta pots into kind of old cement looking pots. Now I like to see terracotta pots like this too, but sometimes I just love the look of maybe, again, an old kind of gray or cement looking pot. And what I plan to use to do that is this compound, this joint compound, it's a spackling. Um, I plan to spread over the outside of the pots to get some texture. And then I have some paint that I'll be uh, using to cover that up to try to get some dimension and to make it look old. I did see some tutorials online where people use various methods to do this, so I kind of picked out a few and thought I'd give those a shot. Uh, I've never done this before, so I'll take you with me. If I fail, I guess I do, and if not, we'll have some pretty pots to use this spring. So join me as I work on them and enjoy! I decided to use a paper towel to dab the spackling before it dried just to give it a more of a textured look versus just a smeared on look. And of course I kind of ran out of spackling. I was down to the last few drops for the, the final um, bottom part of the planter. Um, it's definitely not covered like the others are, but it will still do, I think. The next step is sanding the spackling. I have a coarse piece of sandpaper here. I don't want to get it all together smooth, just kind of sand down at the little tips that are sticking out.
So what I want to do now is look for different paint colors that would fit to create these pots, make them look old, and I have this little section underneath the stairway here, this little space where I store all my paints. And I have some different colors in these. I had actually gotten these for free where my husband used to work years ago. They were actually going to toss them and he rescued them. And they still seem to be okay, even though they are years old. So what I'm looking for is some green, a dark green, which I'm eyeing this one. Um, this one is called Georgetown Green, and it looks really dark there, so I'll pick that one up. And here is a lighter green. I'm not sure would I want to go with a lighter one too, so I'll snag that one too. And then I want some gray. Um, this one here is a nice medium gray color. It's the Country Gray Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. So the colors I'm going to start out with are the two green ones mixed together to create kind of a medium green color and the gray. The spackling did not take long to dry. I'm thinking maybe half an hour to 45 minutes, but I did not come to painting these yesterday. That is why you see me here the next day working on these pots. So just to make sure this will look okay, I will just do one for now and I'll let it dry before applying my second coat. disappointed that I could not bring that dark green out for some reason on this first pot. Um, I still kind of like the look of just, you know, it looks really cementy, but I think for the second one I'm going to try something a little different. I'll just go ahead and brush, dry brush my gray onto the green. That way some of the green will still be exposed. And then for the last pot, I will just do it, everything in reverse. I will put my gray down first and then dry brush the green on top. And whatever I like the best, I will end up painting the big pot with.
So out of these three pots, I think I like the center one the best. So I will be going with that for the large pot. And since I'm in the spring putting mood, I may end up working with a few other methods here. Uh, one that I've done often before, you've probably seen it in our home, is just simply painting the pots white with white spray paint. In this case, I'm using a satin rustoleum, and the color is Blossom White. And then I have these herb names that I will be putting on the side, using my Silhouette Cameo to make them and I'll have them available on my Etsy shop. So since I'm working on pots anyway, I have one more method that I would like to try that I've heard of people using to age terracotta pots, and that is by using a garden lime mixed with equal parts of water and just spreading it over the pot, drying it, and then sanding it off. It's actually kind of nice out here to sand these pots, so I thought I'd work outside here on the deck. Uh, to do this, what I have here is just a fine grit sandpaper, and I will be sanding most of this lime off. I don't know guys, are you familiar with some of these spring bird arrivals here in Ohio? But right now, for the first time, I am hearing the Eastern Phoebe. So beautiful and so spring-like. So for the second pot, I will be using a coarse sandpaper uh, just to see which I would like better. I didn't get this filmed, but I did give these pots a coat of Rust-Oleum's clear coat uh, just to protect that lime on there. I was impressed at how these pots turned out. There are, of course, other ways you can age terracotta pots. The best method probably being just having patience and setting them outside to age naturally but I thought it would be fun to try these different methods for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you're looking for little herb decals, make sure to check these out on my Etsy shop. So I wonder if you guys are doing things for spring already. Uh, maybe you live in an area where 
uh, you have, you know, warm all the time and you don't, you know, get the spring fever like I do here in Ohio. Um, I do appreciate all of our seasons, though. I think it makes me look forward to spring more, being that we do have kind of gray, uh, damp winters. And again, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in next week's video. Bye!